The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was a time when the Feast of Dedication was being celebrated in Jerusalem. And it was winter. And Jesus was in the temple, walking up and down in the portico of Solomon. And the Jews gathered around him and said, How much longer are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus replied, I have told you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name are my witness, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. They will never be lost, and no one will ever steal them from me. The Father who gave them to me is greater than anyone, and no one can steal from the Father. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Most of the texts we will have between Easter and Pentecost are instructional texts. The text we have today is a confrontational text that brings out an instruction. So the Feast of Dedication is a feast when the temple is rededicated after the, the collapse after the, the exile. And, and so this is the context. And, and, and water and light are the big, big themes of this, this rededication. And here we have Jesus pretty much alone in, in the, without a big crowd around him, and the Jews taking the opportunity to, to now challenge him. And, and when the, the scripture or John's gospel especially says the Jews, he means the Judeans, which would be the, the temple authorities which would be the ones who really got annoyed with him and, and wanted to, to kill him. And they're saying to him, well, well, tell us the truth. Are you the Christ? Tell us plainly, stop this foolishness of going all over the place. Are you the Christ? Yes or no? You know, not too long ago, Pope Francis got an, a, a question like that, you know. Tell us the truth. Is this so? Yes or no? He did the same thing <laughs> that Jesus does, he gave them an answer, not the one that they wanted. He said, I've told you, but you do not believe. And what's important here in the text is this, that no matter what Jesus says, no matter what he does, no matter what's written in the, in the scripture, no matter how real the bread of life is, no matter what signs that might be had, those who are not intentioned and disposed to openness, those who have their preconceived ideas, those who want to act as judges to judge God, those who hold the places of, of, of high hubris and, and arrogance, no matter what is said, no matter what is done, they will never believe. And, and, and that's, that's the truth of faith. It, it is a serious truth. And, and it's one that, that boggles our minds constantly. Jesus had already worked his, his most incredible signs by now. He had already turned water into wine. He's he the, the, the man born blind. He's, he's done some of these incredible miracles already. And still, they refuse to believe. Now, they're asking, tell us plainly. But what he gives is a teaching that is, is so beautiful. What he says is, the sheep that belong to me, they listen to my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life. This is now a summary of the Good Shepherd teaching. The four qualities of the, of the relationship between Jesus and those, that and the, those are his sheep. I hope it's you and me. I really pray so. Huh? And, and if we want to know if we are the sheep that are his sheep, then the sheep listen to his voice. You know, so often in our prayer, 
We pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. But do we ever listen to his voice? Do we ever seek his direction in, in our life? Big decisions to be made and you're consulting Tom, Dick, Harry, Jane, Janet, and Jean. Do you consult him? Do you ask him what his will is? Everybody's opinion is important. But what about his opinion in a matter that is important in your life? You're getting into a relationship. Do you ever ask him if this is his intention for you? Ever? Ever? You, 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 you're going into a new job. Do you ever consult him? Things end up bad at the end and you turn around to blame him. You ever ask him his will on the way in? The sheep that are mine listen to my voice. I, I want you to hold that, that thought today. I want you to ruminate it for the day. I want you to chew it and chew it deeply today. The, the sheep that are mine listen to my voice. He said in the Good Shepherd text we had on Sunday, they, they know the shepherd, they listen to his voice, and they follow him. And he repeats it again today. Jesus is inviting those who belong to him to a contemplative stance in life. That, that we, are, we are supposed to be the ones like Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus who are listening to his voice. We are supposed to get so good at listening to his voice that even in the midst of the storm and, and, and all the flurry that the world has to offer, that, that we should be able to hear that voice amidst all the noise. As faint, as thin, as, as, as silent as the voice may be, we should be able to recognize that voice in the midst of the din of all the noise of our life. And not only are we supposed to hear that voice, we're supposed to act on it when we hear it. And, and, and these are now the rules of the game. I didn't give them, he did. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice. That means that these sheep better be still in an act of prayer and a disposition to listening. You know, the good Lord gave us two ears and one mouth, and that means we're supposed to listen twice as much as we speak. But you know, we speak ten times more than we listen. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice. We are invited in this time in the upper room. We're invited to a disposition of prayer. Have you ever done Christian meditation? Ever? Have you ever sat still? With your, with your back straight and, and become conscious of your breathing and, and say the sacred word, Maranatha, which is Aramaic, the language of Jesus, which means come Lord, breaking it into four syllables, Maranatha. Try that today. Try that today. You're still locked down, you know. You have nowhere to go. There are nothing on your agenda. You have nothing that is important. Try that today. Do, do 10 minutes. Ma, ra, na, sa. The contemplative life is not for some, it's for all of us. The sheep that, that belong to me listen to my voice. We have to learn in this time in the upper room how to listen to his voice. We have to learn that. Because we have listened to every other voice and we've gone in every other direction and we've got ourselves into so much trouble. That's what sheep do. Listen to his voice. Ma, ra, na, sa. Sitting, back upright, hands down, breathing, slowing the breath down. There's an app, WCCM, World Community of Christian Meditation. Download the app, you'll get the timer. The sheep that listen, that belong to me, listen to my voice. Hear what else they do. I know them. That's intimacy. We spoke about that many times. That's intimacy. I know them. They and I are thick as thieves. I know them. We, we are mutually interconnected because I live in them and they live in me. 
And, and, and here's the last piece. They follow me. They follow me. They follow me. When last have you allowed Jesus to dictate the pace of your life? When, have, when last have you consulted and asked him the, the direction for your life? When last have you sat before him and said to him, Lord, I have these, all these roads I can go. Which road do you want me to go in? When last in something small or in something big, have you said to him, Lord, you take control. You lead. Let me follow. When last? But then we complain about our life getting into so much trouble and mess. But it's us willfully going where we want to go. The sheep that belong to me, they listen to my voice. I know them. They follow me. This little piece here, you see that little piece right there? That's the whole of the spiritual life. If you ask me what's wrong with the church, it's this that is wrong with the church. Lots of people doing external activities with very little internal activity that is taking place. We call that prayer. If we are not in a, in a rhythm of prayer, we're not listening to his voice, we're not experiencing the love, and therefore we're feeling unloved, and therefore we're not following him, and therefore we're going in every direction that is wrong. You want to renew the church? Start with you in a disposition of prayer, a practice of prayer every single day where you learn to, yeah, 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 listen to his voice, feel the love, just feel the love from him, and follow him. And, and, and it goes on to say, I give them eternal life. And he says elsewhere, eternal life is this, to know the one true God and Jesus Christ whom he said. That's about the love. And, and, and go down to the end where he says, no one can steal them from me. No one. Because the Father is greater than everyone. And the Father and I are one. After this, he picked up stones to stone him. Because he's claiming equality with the Father. And this is part of the revelation of the Trinity. That Jesus is not just a good man. He and, and the Father are one in substance. One in substance. Two different identities, one in substance. The whole spiritual life is wrapped up in three lines. We listen, we know, we feel the love, and we follow. And that's what eternal life is. I'm inviting you to an uh, uh, inner journey. Because the way that we come to understand you, Chris, is by going to the inner journey. Let us go to the inner journey. Let's come to listen, to feel the love, and to follow where he asks us to go. Amen.